What's up, guys? Happy Monday morning. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Um, today, my whole life involves making what are called alt mixes or alternative mixes um, for the Fox Sports gig that we just wrapped up uh, about a week ago. So basically, what I'm going to have to do is create five different versions of the same song and submit them to my contracts. What you'll find when you get into this business is you'll have to do the exact same thing. Uh, they're not just going to ask for one track and be done with you. They're going to say, give us the main mix which is basically everything, obviously. They're gonna want one that doesn't have any leads on the top, so no lead guitars, no lead synths, or anything really in the high frequency range. You're gonna to have to mute those, bounce another version of it. They'll want one that's probably just drums and bass, um, something more in the low register, so you'll mute all of your, if you have piano or guitars or any other instruments you got going on, they just want bass and drums going through there. Uh, and then you'll probably have to do a couple of short versions. Uh, for this particular opportunity, we have to do a 30 second, and a sting, and a sting is anywhere from five to 10 seconds long. So in this video today, I'm gonna just walk you through one of my tracks, how I create all five of those. Um, so you know for yourself, when you're submitting your tracks to these libraries, what to do when they say, yeah, go ahead and give us five alt mixes, you know exactly what you should be doing. Um, it's a lot more complicated than just literally taking your loop and just going, okay, there's 30 seconds bounce, or there's, you know, five seconds bounce. Uh, you need to think of each one of these compositions as a complete uh, track. And so you can't have a lot of silence in there. You can have uh, just abrupt cuts in and out of it. Uh, you got to really think about each alt mix as its own song that could be, that could be placed uh, on TV. So in this track, um, um, just so you guys know, this is kind of a tip I've been sharing with my members. Uh, you can basically create three tracks in one session, especially if you need to crank out a whole bunch of tracks for one opportunity like we did for Fox Sports. Um, and in this um, session here, I have three different songs with three completely different feels, but they're all using the same drums, the same guitars, the same plugins, and obviously the same mastering um, settings on each of them. Um, but we're going to just start with this first one. So what we'll do is we will create the first full mix. So rather than having your start of your loop for the track start right on, let's say we're on bar five here. This is where our track starts. Let me get rid of my mixer here. See right here, bar five, this is where our track starts. I always give myself just a hint more of space before it. So probably just that much before this guitar part comes kicking in, okay? And the reason for that is a lot of times there might be some transient you know, punchiness to the, the guitar, or if you have a drum that starts it off, whatever. You don't wanna lose that like punchiness by starting your track right on the bar. So give yourself that little, you know, millisecond extra time to allow your compressors and your mastering plugins, everything to engage so that you can actually start the track uh, much punchier. And obviously at the end here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of your tracks uh, fade out completely um, before this, um, loop is over. One of the main issues I've been having with some of the syndicate members um, submissions is that let's say I'll play the end of this song right here. This one's not the greatest example because that symbol gets choked out. And I think I automated that down. Yeah, as you can see, I automated that down. But if I didn't, you know, this symbol crash right here would ring out a little bit. And you notice how that symbol crash was still ringing when this loop was over. And so a lot of my members, they were sending me these alt mixes and right when the track was over, you just abruptly hear the cymbal just get cut off and choked or something, or like, like maybe a tom or something else that was ringing out. So that's a big no-no. You can't have anything ringing out at the end of your track. Everything needs to be down to zero, all instruments uh, before your, uh, your session is, or let's say your track is finished with this loop uh, area here before you bounce the, the track, okay? So no lingering sounds that just sort of get abruptly, abruptly cut off. So let's go here with the uh, main mix. So now that I have it all set up, I kind of want to... generally sounding how it's supposed to sound. So I like the way this full mix is sounding. So what I'll do is I will bounce this out. Now for this session or this project, we have to get everything into 48K. Sometimes it'll be 44K, uh, other times it'll be 48. You need to talk to whoever you're submitting to to make sure you know what you should be submitting. For this one, they wanted 16-bit uh, waves at 48K, so we're all good to go on that. Uh, I normally go offline. I don't do any normalization. Um, uh, everything works out great this way. These are just the settings that I go with. 
Um, now for naming, this is kind of important. Now I've already started this, so we're gonna basically rebounce this track. And this one has been called So Crazy. So what I normally do is I'll put my first and last name in the beginning, then I'll put the track title, and then I'll put the version of the alt mix that I'm creating right here. So this is our full, obviously, so we're just gonna put full. So first, last name, title of your track, and what version you're bouncing right there. And I'm all gonna throw them into this rock folder that I have here, and we're gonna bounce. And obviously I already bounced it, so we're gonna go ahead and replace that. So uh, next up, we're gonna do our version without the leads. So um, once this is done bouncing, um, I only have one lead guitar. You can see down here, this yellow orangish track here is my only lead, I believe, uh, in this song. I have some haze here, but haze wouldn't really be counted as a lead, as you can hear here. So basically, I'm just cutting out that lead um, and giving them this version without any lead parts on it. So now we do the same thing. We make sure we're doing 48K. Um, now in this session, I probably could have started in 48K and that way I wouldn't have to convert every time I bounce, um, which is probably a smarter way to go about it. But this session, I forgot to start it at 48K. So now when I bounce every time, I just have to make sure I drag that down to 48. So I'm not doing 44 one. And this one we call no leads or no lead. You can do either one. Um, and we bounce that down. And of course I'm rebouncing now. So it's going to replace the one that I had done before. So the next one that we're gonna do here is a little trickier just because um, we're gonna do drum and bass. Now, as you can see from the start of my track, it's just guitarist starting the song, right? So if I hit play. And the drums and bass don't come in until the second you know, measure here. So we don't want to, let's say we're gonna mute all of our guitars for this mix and our haze but we don't wanna have a track with this much silence before the whole thing kicks in, right? We just wanna start right there where that kick starts going. And that's one thing you gotta make sure you do when you supply your tracks to your music supervisors because you wanna make their lives easier and as simple as possible and you wanna get this track just bumping right away. So basically, again, give it a little space before the bar starts. And now when you hit play, you're just starting right where that kick comes in. And it's basically your drums and percussion. You wanna include your percussion uh, and your bass guitar. I also make sure that if I have any sound effects, I keep the sound effects in my drum and bass section. So if you have any swooshes or crashes or something like that, this track we don't, but as you can hear. Just drums and bass kicking out and then at the end. That's it. So that one's pretty easy, right? Um, but you just wanna make sure that if there's any, and this includes that if you have like the center section or something like that, um, and there's a big bridge where there's only guitars or piano or something playing, you're gonna wanna cut all that out, squeeze those two parts together. You don't need to give them you know, 16 bars of silence. Um, if it's a bar or two, yeah, it's understandable, but you don't wanna give them extra silence. They don't need silence, obviously, in a track. They need music, they need musical elements. So we're gonna go ahead and bounce this uh, whole project. Remember, we're always going down to 48K. Uh, and this one we would actually call drums and bass. And there we go, of course, I've already done this one too. So we're gonna be rebouncing that one. Um, and now this is where uh, things get a little bit hairy. They can get a little hairy. Um, and it's really important that you get your cut downs perfect. Um, and again, make sure they sound like they're standalone uh, cut down. So the first one we'll go with is a 30 second. So we're gonna go ahead and unmute everything that we had muted. So we're back to where we were before. Now, let me make my tracks a little smaller. There we go, so we can see them. A little bit better okay so uh, a lot of times what i'll do is i'll kind of look at my um timing uh stamp up here just to see what is 30 seconds basically when you're asked for a 30 second version you got to make sure you deliver a chorus like the chorus has got to be the main part of that 30 seconds you don't want to give them like a, a, a verse or just an intro or something like that the chorus is really the gut of the song it's really the meat and potatoes and that's really what you need to include in your 30 second mix so what i normally do is i actually start my track um, from basically, you know, towards the end of it where my course would be. So I kind of find out what is about 30 seconds back from the end. So the end would be, we're at here, one. So around 119, 120 is kind of where we're at. So if you go back uh, 30 seconds from that, it would be 50 seconds, right? Because it'd be, you started at 20, you go 10, zero, and then 50 seconds. So um, we look, we scroll back here and look at this right here. This is around 50 seconds. So you can, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly on 30 seconds. You can be 33, you can be 27, right? You can, you know, be a little bit flexible, especially a song like this. Maybe I'd want to do something like, um, yeah, I'd do something like that. 
But now, rather than just starting my 30 second bounce right here, or even giving it like I normally do, just a little bit more. It just doesn't make sense that you hear these guitar leads or this guitar kind of coming in and just like it just starts, right? So you want to make sure that you at least have a nice starting point with your track. So what I'll probably do is check out what's going on with these drums. Okay. So I like that drum fill. I don't necessarily want these guitars kind of leading in with it. So I'll probably mute all of those. Let's see what that sounds like. And then the same with the bass. I probably don't want these bass notes That's kind of what I want. And let's see if I can give myself just a little bit more room. There you go. One thing I almost messed up. I'm glad you I caught this. That's why you want to play back your stuff. Make sure you're unmuting. If you had been muting stuff for previous versions, you got to go back and unmute them because these haze. crucial for this song so I might have missed that in this 30 second version and that would have been really bad bad not good um, so now we're good to go and then I can keep that in or not I probably take that out I like it without the haze so you can do some alternate customization for your 30 second but again the whole point of doing this is to make sure that this 30 second version stands alone as its own track and it didn't just abruptly cut in uh, somewhere it's not supposed to okay so when we go back through our rock ones we're going to call this one just 30. that's all you got to do you can call it 30 seconds or whatever but 30 people in the business they know what 30 means it's 30 seconds long um and finally the last thing you'll do um, in this gig, we only have to provide one sting in some libraries and situations I've had it where they'll say like give us two versions of a sting and a sting again is five to 10, 15 seconds long. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll kind of take that end because uh, a lot of times the end of the song really has a nice final punch to it. But we'll do a little bit of finessing for the intro, uh, the beginning of it. <laughs> I kind of like just how that little part um, that works. But again, I don't want these guitars to lead into it. I don't need this lead. I don't want these, uh, uh, this bass in here. Maybe not like that either. I think I need it. Maybe these shaking tambourines can go away. That's literally as simple as it can be. I mean, we're talking about just like a dun 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 dun, right? Five seconds at the most. You, you can make it that short. You can also make it a little bit longer. Like I could include. Like if I wanted to make this a little bit longer, I'd probably pull this back. Um, I'd probably throw back in these guitars. Something like that. Um, but I, I really like the way that it's just like short and punchy, right to the point, um, and it adds a little finite, a final uh, definite um, ending. Just check out these hits. So make sure that we're good to go, yeah. Sometimes what I'll do with my drums is I'll make sure that things are alternating from loud to soft. You just play with it till it sounds right. Again, those little minute changes you can do and make sure that things sound real tight. Perfect. Solid sting there. So again, we're going to bounce it. We always make sure we hit the 48K if we need 48K. Everything else stays the same. And we just simply call this one sting. And that final part, which is one of the most important things you should be doing is making sure, sorry, I have a mess here of all this stuff going on, um, making sure that you are testing all of your uh, final mixes. So before you send it off to anybody, you should actually go through and listen to them. I know, again, it's extra work, it takes a little extra time, but when you catch these little errors or problems that maybe you forgot or didn't get, didn't see when you were bouncing, 
you'll create better relationships down the road. They're just going to love working with you because you took that time to make sure that everything was 100% ready to be delivered. Um, once in a while, mistakes happen. We, we miss things. Things get cut off. Whatever. We're not perfect. But just taking that extra step for quality control is so important to make sure you're, um, you're going to have some great uh, relationships in this industry. So this was so crazy. So let's go through and just listen to these. Super clean, nice. Okay, so you get the idea. You would go through and listen to all these ones. Let's just check out our sting. All right, that one, let me hear it again. Yeah, see, there's something funky going on with those drums in the beginning. So I might want to give it a little bit more space. That's that problem when you have too little space in the beginning. So if you hear what I'm not liking, sorry to be clear, um, is that the snare on the first hit is just kind of, it just feels like there's a fade in or something. And it's not, I don't feel that snap to it. You hear that? So get the difference. I want it to be da 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 da. Um, these little things, I'm telling you, they will make the difference between your track getting placed or not. So we're going to go back and we're going to rebound stuff that doesn't sound good. So let's go ahead and replace this one. And we'll go through and we'll see if we can uh, see if we fixed it. Yeah, still not. So I'm going to give it even a little bit more time. Let's try it that way. Sometimes you got to give it even more space um, just to make sure that you're capturing that transient hit in the beginning. Um, I normally, as you can see, still work with MIDI pretty much all the way through because I like to have, be flexible and change fills as I need to. Sometimes uh, maybe you work with more just audio and it would be a little bit easier for you to deal with a situation like this. But for me, I really prefer MIDI um, all the way through the process. So that's an example of why you should be listening to your um, final mixes, your alt mixes, before you submit them to anybody to make sure you're catching issues and problems like that. And of course, the last thing you can do is just make sure that you go through and uh, have all be 48, 48, 48, 48. Well, some of them are still processing and showing that they're, they're going to be 48. But yeah, you can go through and especially with your preview, uh, so you can th see these ones. Um, especially in, in a Mac. Um, I think with a PC, you can do that too. Uh, get information on every single file and just make sure that you're uh, getting 48K and 16-bit and make sure they all have dot .wave at the end of them. You know, just little things just to do that quality control and your contacts and your people you're working with are going to love you and want to keep working with you and hand you exclusive opportunities that they won't want to hand anybody else because you're easy to work with, you're professional and you're reliable and you send them high-quality, useful uh, alt mixes. So... Now I only have to do that for probably another 15 or 20 songs. I have a lot of tracks I got to do this for. So not the funnest part about being in this industry, but hey, every single one of these will eventually go down and get me some placements, earn me some royalties. So not going to complain one second about doing this kind of work. This is still uh, way better than anything I could be doing if I had a day job or whatever. So it's still, this is basically just so you guys know, this is probably the most like, ugh, I got to do this kind of thing. Um, part of this business is just you know going through and creating alt mixes and cleaning it up doing your quality control it's a little bit of that monotonous kind of like you know um uh, just just minute stuff that you'd have to do and it's not necessarily creative um but just you know whatever if you if you were really that going out of your mind having to do something like this just think about the royalties i mean sometimes that'll get you through even the most boring of tasks like hey this is going to be money this is going to be placements this is going to be my long-term career um and it's going to get me out of whatever job I have or whatever the situation I don't want to be doing I want to do this um yeah it's going to take some work and I've never been uh, I've never tried to hide that fact from any of you guys I've always been saying this takes work um but again this is 
the kind of work you want to do. I think you would. Uh, I do. I definitely do. So, all right, I'm going to work. You guys have a great day and we shall talk again soon.